Hey everybody, what's going on? Happy Friday afternoon. It's time for the Nashville Restaurant Review Show, and I have uh, my new friend Chris here, who we're going to be talking to from Music City Bread Company. And uh, before we talk to Chris, I just got to tell everybody, today's show and all the shows we do here are brought to you by Bombers and Sleeves. They are the lifestyle apparel brand, and they're dedicated to bringing you the war on self-doubt. This is for the bold, the fearless, and the authentic souls who never back down and wear it all on their sleeves. Bomb your boundaries. Shop Bombers and Sleeves today at bombersandsleeves.com. So, here he is, the man of the hour, the one and only co-owner, head baker of Music City Bread Company, Chris. Now, is it Delise? Delisle. Delisle. There we go. Cool, cool. Yep. So, Chris, man, you uh, you know, I, you have an interesting story, and I can't wait to talk to you about it. But you, uh, from what I'm gathering, you kind of um are truly the um. The, the the I don't want to say definition, but um, we'll say, we'll say the story of how social media can work in a positive way. Yes. <laughs> um. <clears throat> so, Music City Bread Company is <clears throat> an an accident <laughs> that has congealed into something really special for us. Um. So I'm a musician. My fiance Ashley is a musician, and. Uh, the reason I even came to Nashville was, was to be a musician. I'm a songwriter, I'm a guitar player, I'm a guitar teacher. Um, I was an artist for a while and kind of went then in the direction of, of playing lead guitar for Ashley for her band because she is uh, much more into the artist side of things than I am. We, you know, I write the songs and play the guitar, but she, she handles all the fans and the autograph stuff. Um, <clears throat> and so, you know, I'm sure a lot of people know, but there was this whole thing called COVID, that, that happened. And as people who work in the entertainment industry, um, we went from making, you know, a, a sustainable living to making nothing, uh, literally overnight because everything we were doing was just gone. And <clears throat> so I was, I was waiting tables at Outback, just, uh, trying to, trying to make ends meet. And Ashley was working another job and um, we, we were struggling and in the midst of the whole pandemic, I started learning to bake bread because there for a while it was tough to buy at the grocery store. Right. Uh, so I, I thought, you know, I've, I've cooked my entire life. I, from the time I was old enough to be able to sit up straight, my mom would put me on the counter with her in the kitchen and would cook with me. And she would entertain me by having me smell the spices from her spice rack. And by the time I was four, I'd memorized all of the spices in her spice rack just by smell. And so cooking was like this thing. And well, I'd never really baked bread. And I thought, well, that'd be a cool project to add into this. So I started doing it. Lots of research, hours and hours, because I'm obsessive that way. And so I learned to bake bread. I started making bread for us. And Ashley tried some. And she was like, this is the best bread I've ever eaten. You know? <laughs> so we won't, we won't be buying bread anymore because it was... Um, I don't know if it was an easy process, but it was, it was a fun process. And so I started baking more and more. Well, then yeast became very difficult to source because everyone started baking bread because they were all stuck at home. And I was like thinking about it. And I was like, well, if I could learn to do a sourdough bread, I wouldn't need yeast. I just need flour, which I could get in big bulk bags and, you know, have Amazon shipped to me. And so my dad actually gave me a sourdough starter that he had had for months and months and months. And um, he wasn't going to be using it anymore. And so he gave me some. And so I, I started messing around with sourdough and I, I sort of it took a couple of tries, but I learned how to make sourdough bread, um, of, of several varieties. And then I started experimenting. And at the same time, you know, b because I'm a musician, we think of social media advertisement and branding sort of mm -hmm. concept. And I was like, okay, I, I can't post all of these pictures of bread and other things I'm cooking on my social media as a musician, because that's going to confuse people. Sure. So I started a separate social media on uh, Instagram, just called Chris Cooking Nashville, just because I was like, I just want a place to, you know, put all of this. I didn't care whether I had followers or if anyone paid attention. It was literally almost like an archive for me of things that I was doing. And so I started posting pictures on just my personal Facebook and on Instagram of all the bread that I was making. <clears throat> and... At this point, you know, things were shut down, so I wasn't working anywhere mm -hmm. on unemployment um, because literally everything that I was doing had been shut down. 
and I was, I was, you know, I'm, I'm not particularly someone who is, is cool with being on unemployment longer than necessary. It's a great resource that helped me out, but I didn't want to stay there because I just, I'm more active than that. I want to be doing something. And I was looking for opportunity to, to do anything. And a, a girl that I used to work with um, at, at Outback, one of the, one of the waiters there, she messaged me and she goes, this blueberry cinnamon sourdough bread you just put on your Facebook looks incredible. Could I buy some from you? And I was like, oh, I, I, I guess, I sure. <laughs> I was like, well, you know, I'd been thinking about making bread and giving it to people because um, there's, there's a real symbolism uh, especially a biblical symbolism, which is important for me personally, but the, you know, regardless of belief and culture, there's a real symbolism in bread and what it means to break bread with people and to mm-hmm. feed people, especially with bread. And so uh, I had talked with Ashley about this, and I said this would be a cool thing to give people just as gifts, and it would it would be a good way to, to bless other people with what we have to offer. And so then this girl messages me and wants to buy a loaf of my bread, and I'm like, I mean, sure, I guess you can. And I told her, I said, I'll, I'll make a deal with you. I will make it for you. Don't pay me, <clears throat> but give me really honest feedback about would you have been happy had you paid for this? Is this really worth money to you? Because if it is, I would like to know that. Because if it's not, then I also need to work on my change. <clears throat> and so I made this bread, I gave it to her, and it was a couple of days, and I hadn't heard from her, and I thought, ah, eh, she probably didn't like it that much. And so about three days later, she finally messages me back and she goes, I'm so sorry uh, that I didn't message you because we got busy and we ended up having to go out of town for a day. She's like, this is not only the best bread I've ever eaten, but I can't get my boyfriend to stop eating it. <laughs> of it, He's literally eaten almost the entire loaf. And she was like, this is absolutely unbelievable. So I then reached out to a couple of people I had been talking with bread about, um, and, and so I was like, here, let me, let me make bread for you. And, and they were like, okay, cool. We'd love to pay you for it. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll let you pay for the ingredients and made bread for a couple of other people. And I heard the same thing. So I looked at Ashley and I said, what do you think about me selling bread as a way for us to make some money during COVID right now? And she goes, I think it's a great idea. And so we, we sat down and being musicians, uh, we, decided we, we need a name, we need an identity, we need a brand, we need all this mm-hmm. to do it. Let's do it right. And, you know, she, she looks at me and she goes, you know, it'd be so cool because we're in Nashville if you could have Music City bread of some kind. And she's like, I'm sure that name has been taken. So first thing I did was I went on social media, I went online, I looked for anything related to the name Music City bread, and I couldn't find anything. I was like, you've got to be kidding me already. I snapped up the URL and I got the social media handles and I did all of it. And we created Music City Bread Company. And we just started posting on social media, sending out messages to friends and putting up advertisements. We made a page and, you know, eventually we made our our logo here and, uh, you know, did all of our own branding and developed all of this. And it honestly, it just kind of took off. Um, People started messaging us, asking for bread. At first, we were baking out of our kitchen house we were living in at the time, um, which, thankfully, cottage food laws in Tennessee are very kind to uh, bakers especially. Um, So I was able to bake out of our home kitchen as long as people knew that it wasn't an officially licensed kitchen. Um, And under cottage food law, that was fine. And then uh, through social media, again, uh, a lady who we are friends with owns several music venues in town. Um, she saw what I was doing and we, I had actually, when I was in a band at one point, we'd gone to London and she had taken us to London to do a festival over there. Oh, wow. While we were over there, we talked about food and, you know, we tried a bunch of different things that culturally are very different about food in England than it is here. And, uh, and so she knew I was a foodie. And so she saw these pictures and she goes, I have a kitchen that's not being used because COVID has just wrecked our business, but to stay open, we have to serve food. Would you like to come bake some things for us out of this kitchen? And uh, she was like, you know, do you know what a kolache is? And I was like, no, but I'll learn. 
And so she told me about what kolaches were, which for anyone who doesn't know, it's like a sweet bread that is stuffed with, um, originally in, in Czechoslovakia, where this comes from, it's stuffed with like fruit and dessert type things. But wow. of all places, got the dough and decided to put sausage and cheese in it because Texas. And they turned it into a very popular breakfast item. And now kolaches are like this huge rage in num- a number of places around the country. And so we developed our own recipe for kolache dough, and we started selling them through uh, originally Alley Taps downtown, which is where we were selling. Uh, and, and so I was baking my other stuff out of there. So now we had an actual inspected kitchen to use because I was baking stuff for them. And she said, you know, go ahead and, and bake the other things you need to while you're here. And then she ended up uh, opening, reopening Cabana in Hillsborough mm-hmm. Village. She bought that and turned it into Cabana Taps. And so we've started baking out of there. It's a much bigger kitchen than where we were working. And so we, we bake out of Cabana Taps, and we do kolaches, we do um, biscuits for Cabana Taps, and as well as our own business, and then we bake all of our own breads and everything else there. And it's all because I posted a picture on social media and people started messaging. That is such an amazing story. I, I mean, seriously, like... Would you ever have expected, you know, even a year ago, because I was going through your social media and I saw, I guess it started, you know, like uh, early, mid last summer. And here we are almost a year later. It's like, you're the bread guy now. You're Music City Bread Company. <laughs> yeah, it was, you know, it's, it's really funny, the timing of us having this interview and kind of what Music City Bread is doing right now. Because uh, just, just about a year ago, Ashley and I got engaged. Okay. And- a couple days after we got engaged, the first shutdown happened for COVID. And so I apologize. Apparently we wrecked the world for everybody, but, uh, but so we got shut down and it was within a couple of weeks of being shut down. I started learning to bake bread for the first time. And this, this all sort of grew out of that. So our business is less than a year old. And truthfully, if you would have asked me a year ago today, do you think you would own a bakery? I'd be like, absolutely not. I, I don't, I don't even bake bread. Like I, what are you talking about? I wouldn't do something like that. Like I, I it was never my intention to learn to bake really. You know, I love cooking, but baking was never something I really did. And then on top of that, to go to the actual trouble of owning a business for something like that, that I don't already know how to do or why I would do no. No, I was totally fine with, you know, the, the dollar loaf of white bread at Kroger. I mean, that's, <laughs> that, that was the most thought I put into bread, you know, most of the time until all of this just sort of came out of nowhere. And, and now everybody asks like all the questions about bread and wants to buy our products. And here we are. Yeah. This is um where I say, you know, COVID, I, I think COVID has been a blessing I truly do. And and stories like this is why I feel that. I I feel everybody really needed to shut down and just do that reboot of life and find their way in life and and make things happen that, you know, either you wanted to or expected to or tried to or didn't expect to like you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, Ashley and I have really had to sort of refocus our lives over the last year, multiple times. And although it was never easy, it's turned into a really good thing for us. The, the job that she was working was very high stress and was not healthy for her. Mm-hmm. She in that in the midst of COVID, um, because we're, we're crazy and we do things like quit jobs in the midst of a pandemic. Um, <clears throat> we opened music city bread as a result of COVID, uh, her, music career she's actually totally rebranding and and preparing to um once once things like music actually come back and you know things get more under control she's going to come out as a brand new uh artist which is is basically what she's been doing but a slight rebrand from where she is to really get a fresh start and do all of the things in the way that over time she's learned now that this is what she really wants to do and wants to be as an artist Um, uh, you know, I've been able to grow my guitar teaching business. I'd only had a couple of students and in the middle of COVID, I grew that at one point in time to having almost 20 students. Um, 
you know, that has since come back down because I don't put as much focus into that anymore. Um, now we, we bake bread instead, but, you know, but we, we learned a lot from growing that business and I have, you know, a, a handful of extremely loyal and talented students now, which, um, is just fulfilling for me as a guitar teacher, um, to, to be able to help students in that way. Um, so, you know, we've been able to do, I mean, we've wedding planned all the way through COVID and, you know, we, uh, we we ended up moving and found a, a, a different place to live that uh, is a little smaller in its resources, but is also a little smaller in its monthly rent. So, you know, we we've set ourselves up to where, you know, she can really focus on music. We focus on the bakery together, and I do the guitar lessons. And I, I've got a uh, I've got a night job that, that helps pay the bills right now. But eventually, someday when the businesses are, you know, grown properly, then you know, we'll be able to focus on working for ourselves and doing the things we love and doing the things we own rather than just working the same nine to five collect your paycheck kind of jobs that, you know, they, they paid the bills, but they weren't really that satisfying in, in no. terms of what you want to do with your life. And so I think COVID really brought to the forefront the things that were unhealthy in our lives and helped us make those changes because we had time. We had the time to think about it. So I agree with you. I think it's been a blessing in disguise for anyone who was willing to rotate their perspective and see it that way. Absolutely. Now, how about, um, so, so a background on me, uh, back uh, in, in my younger days, uh, when I was 18, 19, I actually, uh, I'm from Philadelphia and I owned a pizza shop. Okay. Uh, one of the things I learned, um, that a, I love pizza and we'll eat pizza seven days a week. B, uh, I love to make pizza. But C, I hate making the dough. So that that was like the nightmare as I would have to do it every day. So now you're making dough all the time. Yeah. Have you come to realize like, oh, my God, like this is this is like crazy. You know, <clears throat> baking bread and, and the process of preparing dough and everything for me has been a real interesting growing experience. Um when I first started doing it, I was doing everything just by hand because I didn't have any kind of a mixer. I didn't, you know, <clears throat> I didn't have any resources other than my hands and a big bowl. Wow. I and, I, and I sort of respect the fact that a lot of bakers, even to this day, still work that way because there is, when you at least start that way and you learn to make dough by hand, you really develop a connection with what this substance is that has been a survival food for thousands of years for the human race. Mm -hmm. And you start to, it, it, you, you can feel the history in the dough that you are making when you follow a recipe and you realize this is a technique that has developed over hundreds, if not thousands of years. Um, so that was a really cool experience for me to kind of learn that. And I'm, again, I'm a researcher, I'm a learner. So I took a lot of time to really understand different kinds of dough and how it was created and where it came from. And I, I geek out over this stuff and, um, you know, probably bore some people to death when they just listen to me and they're like, dude, it's just dough, move on. Um, but but it, it's a really important thing for me. So then <clears throat> my parents actually were so kind and um, for uh, my birthday last year, they gave me a, a KitchenAid mixer, a stand mixer, a really nice one. Um, so I started using the dough hook and creating all of these, you know, doughs that I, that it was much easier because I wasn't working it with my hands for hours. Mm -hmm. Um, and then sourdough specifically, you know, it's, it's a very gentle process once you get the ingredients mixed. Um, so it's not necessarily a working intensely with the dough all day. And, uh, it's, it's more subtle than that, I guess would be a good way of putting that. So, um, so there were different experiences creating the dough. And then as I started to scale up, we started to sell it and eventually moved into a kitchen. And now the kitchen we're in, we have a gigantic, uh, mixer. So I can do 20 batches of dough at a time. In wow. that. So, you know, where I would make one loaf of bread at a time before now I can mix up the dough and make 20 at a time. And, you know, I'm, I'm lifting 30 to 50 pounds of dough. Uh, based on whatever it is I'm making. Um, so it's the experience of making dough has 
sort of changed, morphed, and grown for me. Um, <clears throat> there are aspects aspects of it that I don't like. <laughs> Dough can be fickle. It can mm-hmm. be sticky. It can be heavy. It can be um, just just very difficult based on which kind of recipe you're trying to do. And unfortunately, if you don't mix it properly, you don't make it properly, little tiny things, if you forget to put something in or whatever, it, it, it fails and you'll have no idea it's going to fail until you put it in the oven or until it's about time to put it in the oven and it's still not rising if you want it to. And then you're like, okay, back to the drawing board, I guess, because that's and it uh, it can it can abandon you in the midst of your darkest hours. <laughs> um, it, it, uh, it it doesn't care how you. Oh. Um, <clears throat> so dough is a uh, an interesting mistress, shall we say? It's it's a very it's a very difficult thing, but at the same time, it's a very rewarding thing. And when you put something into the oven and then it comes back out, and the dough was perfect. And it comes out and you look at the loaf of bread you've created or the baguette or the biscuits or the kolaches or the cinnamon rolls or whatever it is you create. You know, you, you go and you open up the oven and you pull it out and it's a beautiful, puffy, golden brown or even mahogany brown is how I like to make my bread a little darker. Um, and you see the thing that you've created. It's, it's really satisfying. Very, very satisfying. And I think that's honestly what has kept me doing this. Um, to, to the extent that I do, because I'm always still experimenting with new recipes and new concepts, looking for a new product and looking for what people might want and trying to improve upon what I do because I don't want to just be a <clears throat> dump it out of a box, mix it up in the mix right. oven kind of baker. That's, that's, not, that's not what I want to do. I want to understand the guys that are fifth, sixth generation bakers that live in like Europe and various places where they are still a thing, um, and their whole family is a lineage of bakers who, you know, they can take a giant bowl and just dump ingredients in, they just eyeball everything, and they come out with the most perfect bread just time and time and time again, and I remember watching a video on online, this guy was a French baker who was known for his baguettes, and he walks into his bakery, which, you know, a couple hundred years old, and has been family forever he walks in and stops and he kind of looks around and then he looks at the camera and you can see the little uh, translation that reads out on the bottom of the screen and he says it's humid in here today and it's a little cooler than I would like for it to be I'm going to adjust my time by 13 minutes Hmm. And and I'm like I'm sitting here thinking like you can walk in your bakery and understand your dough and your process so well that you were going to pick a specific number of minutes to change the amount of time that you're going to wait or whatever it is you're going to do because he can just tell because he's that good at it. Now, I don't know if I'll ever be that good, but <clears throat> it's it's this idea of understanding your product and understanding getting your hands into your dough and knowing it so well that you can adjust and you can read what's happening and you can create something consistent for people that makes other people say, wow, this bread is incredible. And that for me is what dough is all about. Well, well let me, let me say this. Like as I went through the website and, and social media and I'm looking at all the pictures, I realized how much I truly love carbs yeah. and I love bread. And I, I, I got it. Like where the hell did you come up with the idea for chocolate bread? I never <laughs> seen chocolate bread. So <clears throat> I love just creating recipes. First of all, I, you know, like I said, I've been cooking my whole life. One of my favorite things to do has always been to go to the store and look at the produce section and just visually see what looks good. If it looks fresh, it's bright colored, it looks crisp, it looks whatever it is and craft my dinner or my recipe based on whatever I can see because good quality stuff and things that make you think creatively are are a really important concept for me. My favorite celebrity chef has always been Gordon Ramsay. And he says in several different videos that I've seen of him teaching recipes, take good ingredients, 
don't get in their way and let them speak for themselves because that's what a really good chef does. And you have to know the technique, but if you try to get too cute with it, you're going to ruin it. Mm -hmm. And so I've always taken that concept. So I then applied that creativity and that concept to bread. And so I was making bread and I was coming up with these different ideas. And the first thing that I made that wasn't just a plain sourdough bread is I put, um, olives inside of a bread. I mean, like an olive loaf, but I'd seen other people do this. I thought that's super cool. So I tried that and it was great, but I was like, I want to make mine a little more of a flavor. So I put in herbs and, you know, mixed it all in. And then I did the blueberry cinnamon. Uh, that was the second one that I tried and that came out fantastic. Um, and that was the one that, you know, started music city bread. Well, then I got this idea what if you could make bread sweeter? Mm. And so I started toying with the idea of what would you mix in bread? And um, Ashley loves chocolate and she loves peanut butter. And she especially loves chocolate and peanut butter together. And so I got this idea. What if you could make bread that was chocolate, turn it into French toast and then put peanut butter on the French toast because she likes peanut butter on her regular French toast. And I was like, why can't you put chocolate inside the bread? And so I took a a basic bread recipe. I made it a little sweeter. Uh, I tried several different methods of of putting chocolate in there and settled on basically a, uh, a lighter colored chocolate bread with chocolate chips actually folded into it. So we have chocolate chips baked through it. I didn't overdo the sugar on it because I was like, it's more about that cocoa chocolatey flavor than it is sugar because it is still bread. It still has, has to be somewhat savory and you put too much chocolate, too much sugar in there and the yeast is not going to do what you want it to do. Um, So I balanced that and I tested it and I took this, this loaf of chocolate bread out of the oven and it was, uh, it was kind of an interesting brown color that I was like, it's not bad. But it's, it doesn't look as rich as I want it to. So I redid it again, and I actually used uh, activated charcoal, which, you know, popular thing for chefs to use to, to add a, a dark color or to, you know, enrich the color of something. So I used activated charcoal, and I made another chocolate loaf, and it came out this dark chocolate brown, almost heading in the direction of black. And it tasted unbelievable. And it's got, it's, you know, it's, it's this light cocoa flavor and like these melty chocolate chips that are in there. And I made some of that and I turned it into French toast and put peanut butter on it and I gave it to Ashley and she just had this great big eyes look at, oh my gosh, it was just incredible. And that's now become one of our best sellers uh, for people that are looking for something really unique. Like you can make dessert type sandwiches you can make french toast you can just eat it with some honey butter on it is fantastic uh it makes an amazing peanut butter and jelly it's uh it's it's really cool do do you realize your love for ashley might have changed the whole world with the thought of that seriously yeah i (laughs) funny uh Ashley and I, when we, when we first met, met at a music shop, uh, she was working in a music shop and, um, you know, we met there because I was playing guitar for an artist that introduced the two of us. And, you know, it, it, at first, and she'll tell people this at first, she wasn't really too sure about me. She was kind of like, yeah, you're nice, but no, go away. Um, and I was politely, uh, insistent <laughs> on, no, no, let's, let's let, you know, give me a chance. And, uh, we, had this very interesting kind of, you know, growing to know each other kind of part of our relationship at the beginning. And, you know, as we're now getting ready to get married in May, she's made the comment before. She's like, the thing that has always made me uh, so confident since you've asked me to marry you, that makes me so confident for marrying you is you have made me the best version of myself I've ever been. And everything you do helps me be better. And it's really funny that she says that because I also sit here and think about it. And it's, it's very, very true that she makes me the best version of myself I've ever been. I'm so inspired to do things like come up with great bread recipes or run a business properly and, and do it, you know, with, with the right honor and integrity. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the things that, that are really important to us. 
And, and part of that is because that's who I am. But part of that is also because she deserves to have that kind of a person in her life. And she deserves to be a co-owner of a business that she can be proud of in that way. And so, you know, a lot of, a lot of my recipes and a lot of the things I do, be it cooking or baking, either one, uh, either come from the fact that I'm just trying to impress her even to this day, um, or at the very least are inspired by things that I see in her, that this is really important. And it makes it very easy for me to then say, I bet that's important to other people. Well, I'm going to tell you, do not stop trying to impress her, please. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So, um, what's the best way everybody can get the bread? I mean, can anybody just go over to a cabana taps and, and buy the bread or do you have to pre-order it? Yeah. So, so right now, uh, eventually our goal is to have an actual storefront where people would be able to come in and buy from us. Um, you know, maybe go to farmer's markets when we can eventually get there and set up, um, right now, because of the fact that just because I work three jobs at the moment, um, there's only a, a certain amount of time we can be there. We do everything baked to order because okay. the last thing I want to do is have somebody come buy our bread and then take it home and it's dry, stale, you know, whatever. Uh, so I prefer to be able to give them fresh bread. And there's something, you know, eventually if, if we if we grow the business large enough, I won't always be able to do this, I know. But in the moment, at least, there is something really important to me about it being either me or Ashley that hands you your fresh made bread because there's a personal touch on mm-hmm. every bread that I make. And I, I care just as much about one loaf as I do the loaf before and the loaf after. And it's, it's a, you know, a real focus for me. So the best way for people to order bread uh, is to go to, we have a website, it's musiccitybreadco.com. Uh, or you can find us on social media. It's at music city bread co Facebook, Instagram, all of that. And, just send us a message. There's a, there's an order form on our website where you can go through and just tell us what you want. Um, or you can just send us a message on social media and our menu is posted on our website with all of our prices of you know what different things are. Um, so anybody can go and order from any of those locations, just message us directly. And then what we'll do is we will set up when we can bake it and when you can come pick it up from us, so that way you get it as fresh as possible. And eventually, hopefully we'll have a storefront where we'll bake every day, and right. you, know, you can just kind of walk in and get fresh bread that day. Um, but in the meantime, with the, with the limited access to uh, time that, that we have at the moment, that is our, uh, that's our most successful method so far of getting people the, the best and freshest bread that I know how to make for them. That's awesome. And also, too, to let everybody know, uh, we're going to be doing a contest coming up on Instagram later on today, uh, which we're, I'm going to finalize with you guys in a little bit. Uh, but you guys are going to be giving away a dozen of your ex's Texas biscuits. So tell us about those. Yeah. So um, I grew up in the country. Okay. I grew up in a town of 800 people. Oh, wow. Yeah. There are literal engine parts hanging off of our fence because that's how the fence closes. Um, it's, uh, it's an old country trick when you got, you know, some, some extra pieces of an old engine you've taken apart and use it to make your gate close. And when you live in the country, biscuits are a staple food. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, it's so funny. My mother is one of the most incredible cooks I have ever met in my life. I mean, she can make anything. My dad's a great cook too, but you know, my mom just has this, uh, this touch with food. And for some reason, biscuits are something she just never really made. And, you know, so we would eat biscuits, but it would be like, you know, tubed biscuits. Um, and, and we didn't really care. You know, it was it just it wasn't a thing around our house. But I've always loved biscuits. I love biscuits and gravy. I love biscuits with a sandwich. I love biscuits on the side of something like chicken. I love biscuits and honey. I love biscuits and jam. I just love biscuits. And so when I started doing the bread, uh. I, I sort of was leaning in the direction of baking things like bread because I had actually first started biscuit because I wanted to learn how to do biscuits for us because I always wanted to know how to do this. And so I tested several different methods of using uh, different ingredients and trying to make different kinds of biscuits and back and forth and all this stuff. And it finally dawned on me that the original is probably the best way of doing things. 
And so I tested out a couple different kinds of flour and I figured out the one that was the lightest and fluffiest and, you know, most crispy on the outside. And I used real butter and I used buttermilk. So I make biscuits with flour, butter, and buttermilk. And I don't complicate it any more than that, but I've really played around with the right texture and the right way of doing it. And <clears throat> to put a little fun spin on it, our biscuits are square uh, or kind of rectangular shaped. If you go on our website, you'll see a pan of them is uh, uh, the, the picture that's on Facebook on our website. There's a picture of it and whatever. So we do these square biscuits. Um, and for anyone who looks at our Facebook and our website, you'll see everything is music themed, especially related to country music because we're both country musicians and country songwriters. And so, we, I mean, George Strait is the king of country music. And, you know, we, uh, we created my ex's Texas biscuits. I make sure they're Texas sized and they're thick and they're puffy and they're made with real butter and they are crispy and fluffy and, and lovely and wonderful and golden brown. And we do them in, in two different ways. We do just plain buttermilk biscuits. Uh, I also do jalapeno cheddar buttermilk biscuits. And uh, for, the, for the giveaway, uh, whoever wants to get a dozen of these biscuits for, uh, from us, I'm happy to, to make it either regular or jalapeno cheddar, whatever their, whatever their preference is. So awesome. they are absolutely fantastic. And uh, it's it, every time I bring a, a pan of biscuits out of the oven, you can smell the butter coming off of them. It's it's so hard not to just eat them. So hard to not just pick it up and eat it. Because it's <laughs> for kinds of carbohydrates. So. <laughs> uh, the music career for you guys. So you, you mentioned with Ashley, um, she's going to do a reboot. So is everything kind of like on hold until the reboot happens for you guys musically? Or so in in terms of what other people see, it probably looks like it's kind of on hold. Um, in terms of what she and I are doing, we're working constantly. Um, he is writing regularly and, um, you know, coming up with, uh, the, the songs that are going to be, you know, the new songs that she will release. Um, I am, she's actually learning to do chicken pick and guitar, um, teaching her how to chicken pick because I play, uh, a combination of kind of rock and country and it's all very guitar heavy. Like it's, it's all about the guitar chops and, and trying mm-hmm. I like to be flashy and I like to try to show off the guitar playing a little bit. So, um, you know, so I do a lot of that kind of stuff, but I'm actually teaching her how to do it as well. And she's, she's working new technique on guitar. And, um, we are, we're looking at like, you know, a, a logo and, and new branding and new merchandise, and all of these things. Um, so in, in terms of what other people are going to see, they probably won't see much happening, uh, until after our wedding, because we're also kind of focused on, you know, the next couple of months getting that, uh, getting that under our belts. And then when, you know, we're, we're kind of waiting on the music world to come back a little bit, because right now shows are very difficult to come by. Yeah. Only shows that you even can come by if you can find them are usually little, um, writer's round type things here in Nashville, which I don't get me wrong. I love playing writer's rounds, but eventually, Somewhere in your career, you have to move on from just doing writers round seven nights a week. Yeah. Uh, so we're you know we're pushing for more full band type things and bigger shows and festivals and whatever. So we're kind of waiting on some of that stuff to come back. But behind the scenes, we are working to get ready. Um, <clears throat> and eventually, when when COVID settles down and um, <clears throat> we have the ability to do it, I'm actually going to release my first single just as a, as a solo artist, because I, I don't do the artist thing to try to make a living off of it like she does. But, you know, as, as a musician, you do these things because they're fun as well. So we're both, we're both working on stuff. Um, oh. we're, we're just a little, a little bit away from the world being ready for it. So, but we are working on it. Awesome. Chris, this was great getting to talk to you and getting to meet you and uh, learning all about uh, not only the bread, but you and Ashley, the music and everything. Uh, I look forward to meeting you in person at some point. Yes, sir. I look forward to eating that chocolate bread at some point. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, uh, again, thank you. And everybody, musiccitybreadco.com. And check them out on social media. Check out the website and order those breads. Yes, please. We'd love to bake for anyone and everyone. Absolutely. Chris, thanks again so much, man. Yes, sir. Thank you.